Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Soros Watercolor. At any time during this video, you can click on the link in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn more about my videos, self paced courses, and live online classes and workshops, you can click on the link that appears at the end of this video. This is the narrated step by step tutorial for my painting, Country Road. The image on the right is a reference for my painting. The image on the left is my interpretation of this simple scene of a country road. I'll begin my painting with a sky wash of cerulean blue. I'm just going to mix a uh, pool of cerulean blue on my palette and I'm going to use a uh, just a soft round wash brush. And as I uh, come down the page, I'm going to add more water to my brush and start to thin the mixture out and gradate it to a lighter value. But it's going to be a fairly consistent tone as it comes down the page. I'm working on an 8 by 10 sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. So it's not a large composition, it's a fairly small painting. And I'm going to bring this all the way down to the horizon line. So uh, and and I'm now I'm starting to add some water to thin this out. But I want my paper saturated to the horizon line because I'm going to come in and if you look at the subject in the top right corner, you'll see some distant trees and, and distant tree line. And I'm going to paint those wet in wet uh, so that I get some soft edges and it looks like they're in the distance. So I started working wet on dry as applied this uh, cerulean blue wash and uh, then I'm going to start to do some wet and wet work uh, to, for the trees. Now I'm going to clean my palette to get rid of the cerulean blue mixture and I'm going to set it up for the painting that I'm going to be doing uh, in, the, in the background. I'm going to be painting these distant tree lines. So I'm using some sap green. I'm putting in some pyrrole red. I'm mixing up a variety of greens here. Now I'm adding some royal blue. So that'll give me some uh, some warmer greens and some cooler greens and some some kind of in the middle. I'll also get a little quinacridone and gold here and mix some of that in. So this is generally what I do when I'm going to be working in an area and I know I'm going to have a variety of mixtures. I just mix them up in advance and then I start to apply them. So my paper is still wet from the sky wash that I applied. And I'm taking some of my, my mixture here that I have on my palette and just uh, touching it to the wet paper. So I, I get a soft edge along the top and then on the bottom I'm going to get a hard edge because uh, the moisture only went to, to the horizon line. So this paint is going to uh, be pulled down by gravity because I'm working at about a 20 degree angle and it's going to stop when it gets to the dry paper where I've stopped applying the sky wash. But I'm going to get a nice diffused uh, soft edge tree line because I'm working wet and wet as I apply the mixtures I'm applying right now. You can see there's some gold tones, there's some greens, and there's some cooler greens in here. I'm taking some of the gold and mixing it in. Just trying to get a variety. And now this is just uh, a little closer to us. This, this is a tree that's on the other side of the road there. I'm just putting in a little bit of uh, soft wash there, and it's a warmer tone and I'm going to come back over top of that with a, a low moisture brush later on working wet on dry to, to develop that tree and give it some texture. Now I'm going to take a cooler darker mixture and work it into the wash that I've already put in there and this is going to continue to give me soft edges because I'm working wet and wet. 
but it starts to give the suggestion of some shadowed areas in this distant tree line. I'm not going to get real fussy with this. And I'm applying this just across like there is nothing in front of it, knowing that I'm going to be putting some trees, uh, the tree, big tree on the left, over top of it, and the telephone pole or the utility pole will be over top of part of it also but I'm going to be painting it with a darker value. If I were to try and paint this as I am and, and paint around the objects that are in the foreground that are in front of it, it, it would look very, very forced and wouldn't look as natural. I can, I can just create this nice kind of flowing uh, soft shape here in the distance. And then just when I, my paper is dry, I just paint over top of it with a darker value and it's going to give me a hard edge on top of this. Now I'm going to mix some hands of yellow and some uh, gamboge on my palette. I want to get a uh, kind of a bright yellow to, rep to represent the, uh, the field there in the distance. It's kind of got, it has some uh, bright yellow weeds or flowers growing in it so I'm going to just indicate those along the the edge top edge uh, of that field that's in front of that tree line so again I'm just painting over that that tree in the foreground with this wash so I don't have to stop and cut around that. I can just let it kind of flow like it's going right behind this tree. And this is another area that I'll just paint over. Now as I come towards the foreground, I'm starting to add a little bit more green. Um, all these mixtures that I'm using here are basically sap green, royal blue, quinacrid and gold, and uh, pyrrole red. And at times I'll put in a touch of quinacrid and burnt orange. I'm going to put a few touches of that red tone here in the closer to us. But I'm going to go just a little darker on the value. It's going to go a little bit more to a middle value as I get closer to the foreground here. Just using my wash brush. And I'm going horizontal with my brush strokes because this is a flat, this is a horizontal plane and I can help describe that by uh, the direction of my brush stroke. Yeah, a little bit of a, a red tone in there. And right now it's wet and wet uh, that I'm applying this the conditions. Now I'm going to cross over to the other side of my composition there, the other side of the road. I'm going to put some of this gamboge Some, some more of these yellow flowers on this side of the road and they're coming a little bit closer to the towards that tree that's in the middle ground there and then just add some more of the green mixture that I have on my palette Yeah, it's going to cover that, and I've actually I changed the direction a little bit with my brush strokes because there's a there's a diagonal uh, line there that's that's uh, delineated by the, the 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 brush and the grass that's near the road, and there's a field that's running behind it, so there's kind of an edge there. So I've described that uh, with the direction of my, of my brush. Uh, running right along the road there is a, a stretch where they cut the grass 
that's a bit of a brighter green and it, it's parallel with the road so I'm going to indicate that and it's hard to see but there's some pencil marks there that indicate where there's some uh, fence post uh, along the road there they're on they're on the left side of this strip that I'm painting right now so they're bef before this patch of grass that and it kind of is a dividing point for this area of grass and the field I've dried this and now I'm uh, mixing uh, a gray tone. I've, I've used some cobalt blue and some rose matter quinacridin and added um, some quinacridin gold to it to, to neutralize it. So first I mixed the violet then I added a, a gold tone to it to turn it more of, to more of a gray. And that's a bit darker than I want. I'm going to add some water to this. I'm going to thin this out. And I'm just going to put a simple gray wash on this road. Soften that with a tissue there. I'm going to take uh, a liner brush with some gamboge and just give a, a little indication of the, the yellow line on the road there. And it's, it's not right in the middle because um, of the position on where we are with our, our line of sight. Uh, the, uh, the perspective, it's it shifted a little bit to the right because of the angle that we're looking at this. I've dried my paper and now I have a variety of mixtures here of greens on my palette. And I'm taking my wash brush and I'm going to use the side of the brush and I'm painting the foliage before I paint the tree trunk. There's a, there's a tendency to, to paint tree trunks and then kind of hang foliage on it and it normally ends up looking like um, it's a telephone pole with foliage stuck on one side of it and um, I find if I just start to paint the foliage first then come in and put the the trunk in it, it they fit together a little bit better so there's some gold tones there's greens there's uh, now I'm, I'm taking a, a cooler mixture and this mixture here is my sap green with royal blue but I've also added some quinacridin and burnt orange uh, to kind of uh, neutralize neutralize that mixture a little bit so I'm not I'm not trying to paint leaves. I'm just trying to indicate the 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 body of the tree and the texture. And you can see I I get the the sky coming through the broken edge kind of application of the paint with a brush like this. It's not really even a, a low at times it's a low moisture brush, but there's when I'm applying it, it there's times here where the the, the brush has uh, it's not saturated, but it's pretty damp and has quite a bit of moisture in it uh, because it's not all textural. There's some areas there you see some smooth wash and uh, so it's just a combination, but uh, I'm just dragging the side of the brush and just starting to build up some values and textures just to suggest the, the body of this tree and the foliage of this tree. I'm continuing on and I've taken this to the edge at the top and I'm dragging this a little bit over the road. It hangs out over the road and blocks it. And now I'm going to do uh, the same to this tree across the road. It's a smaller uh, tree. It's a smaller shape here. I won't be doing as much. It's a very soft uh, brush I'm using. It's a, a synthetic squirrel blend. And at times I'm going to take the tip here and just be a little more specific with a brush mark just to help finish an edge. I'm 
Now I'm going to take some of the same mixture and indicate where the shadow is being cast on the ground. Now I haven't drawn the, or painted the tree in yet, the trunk, but I know I have my sketch there where it's at and I know where this is going to be and I'm going to go ahead and put this in now. So this contour is the land, the flatness of the land. And this is a, a kind of a cooler blue-green. Now I'm going to mix uh, on my palette uh, some quinacridone burnt orange and some royal blue. And it's going to give me a fairly dark mixture here that I can use to paint the, the tree and the branches. Now I'm going to load some of this onto the quill brush that I'm using. I'm going to start to paint the, the, uh, the tree trunk here. And you can see that I can paint over the distant tree lines and just as I did as I was applying the foliage to the tree. Uh, because this is a darker value, it's going to cover what I, what I had put underneath it. Um, but it's going to look, uh, the, the two are going to re relate to one another better. It's going to feel like it, it fits and wasn't kind of painted around. So uh, it's, it's a pretty, pretty dark value here. It's a, it's a silhouetted shape almost it, it, as far as the trunk and some of the branches. And uh, I'm just going to give an indication of a few branches here and there off, going off at some angles. I don't have to get too, too fussy with it, but uh, I need to do enough to, to suggest what's happening there. I'm going to go a little darker with a shadow relates a little bit better with the value on the tree. I'm going to continue to put a few of these branches in. And uh, this rig, this uh, quill brush I'm using has a nice point and it allows me to, to, to do some of this brush work and it ha holds quite a bit of paint so I don't have to keep reloading. But I could be doing this with a, a, say a number three rigger brush I'm going to I'm going to get my uh my my liner brush here number 1 or liner or rigger and uh put some finer lines in here so this is a number 1 uh liner brush I'm just going to put some branches and this is the royal blue and quinacridone and burnt orange mixture I'm going to go to the other side here where the, this smaller tree is right on the side of the road and it has a, a grouping of uh, trunks to, they're like a bunch of saplings or the, the style of tree here I guess like it has a, a trunk that has several elements to it that divides up so I'm just going to suggest that and I'm going to need to put some shadows under this tree and they, they come over the bank so I'm trying to contour that kind of slope and um, add a little more texture there but I'm going to need to, to carry that shadow onto the road so I'm going to get uh, a gray mixture and I'm going to, and I'm going to paint that shadowed area on the road I'm going to get some cobalt blue and some rose matter quinacridone to make a violet. And I'm going to add some uh, quinacridone gold to that, drag a little of that color into there to neutralize it. But I'm just going to give this the indication of that shadow from that tree being cast onto the road and it kind of comes over the the little slope there and then just cast a shadow on the road. Now there's a utility pole 
that's on the left side of the road there and rather than try and freehand uh, a very straight line and have it go where I don't want I'm going to use some uh, tape this is actually a drafting tape and I'm gonna, gonna mask that off so I can maintain a nice straight uh, shape if I were just to freehand this um, this narrow uh, utility pull I might have some wobbly edges and I just want it to have a nice clean appearance because it's kind of stands there by itself so I'm gonna dry this and then I'll take this tape off so this is pretty dry and I've applied just a, a gray mixture there and now I have a utility pole and I'm going to add uh, some wires uh, hanging off of that and I'll be using my uh, liner brush my number one liner brush here and there's some uh, little fence post along the road I'm going to put those in Got a little piece off an angle there. So I'm going to correct that. Now I use the same brush to put these utility lines in. Uh, the, the wires that are hanging off this pole. There's not a lot of them, but just, just enough to give an indication. That's a little thick there, so I'm going to blot that up with a tissue. There we go another one there There's like a little box on that wire it looked a little too heavy for me so I'm gonna redo that and there's my wires Now I'm going to put a mat on this to get a good look at it, clean the edges up, and there we have my painting, Country Road. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about my online videos, my courses, or my live classes and workshops, you can click the link that's appearing on the screen.